Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hey, we had a perfect week. Nothing was broken, everything loaded, had a great time, and they sold through pretty much everything last week except for these four. So let's go ahead and cover these cool new ones. Starting things off today is the Les Paul Custom with Lace. So with a title like that, I was kind of thinking we'd have something like the Ragtop Les Paul that we saw a long time ago, or have some risque design on it. But from these photos, it just kind of looks like a dark maroon sparkle, potentially. It's kind of hard to tell if there's going to be anything more than that, but it looks like the back was also refinished like that. But the headstock was left alone, so probably one better appreciated in person would be my guess. But next up in the spirit of Halloween, they did the Black O'Lantern, which kind of looks like the stuntman that they did not too long ago. But hey, it's got a black finish. It's got an interesting orange stripe. Now, would it have been cooler had they just did the stereotypical jack-o'-lantern eyes right here and then a really evil smile with the rest of the guitar being black? <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of cool. But check this out, a complete orange gloss back. Interesting. Kind of needs a black stinger or something, I think, on this one. To complement the kind of stinger that you have on the front, but just on the inverse. But it looks like they played with the pickups here a little bit, and it's a standard 50, so it's going to have a slightly chunkier neck. So all that at, I think, $100 over retail price. It's all right. But check this freaky thing out for five grand. It's an all-white Les Paul Custom that's been white and blacked out. It's interesting, because you get the double white pickup here, you've got the white control knobs, but yet the black hardware, black pickup ring, no neck pickup, no toggle switch to worry about, but then you get the whole black and white continuation on your fretboard here. Same thing with your headstock. Since they put the white truss rod cover on it and, you know, the mother of pearl white inlays, I think you get the idea. But then you flip it over to the back and I'm sorry, ma'am, double stingers just happened. <laughs> That's such a cool piece. Center of the neck is white. This is all white. However, you can tell the edges are still black. So this is just a beautiful black and white guitar. You could say it reminds you of a cow. However, it just gives me spooky ghosty vibes. So I thought that was a very fascinating piece. And despite being more simple, generally one pickup guitars sell for a huge premium. So even paying the retail price for a regular Les Paul Custom, not the white one, so you technically kinda got a discount. I thought that was still more than fair for this cool piece. Whoever did this one at the mod shop, you're going down in history. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a googly eye underneath this truss rod cover. But if that was too spoopy for you, how about this one? Les Paul Special 57 in green pea satin. Custom shop Les Paul Special, no pick guard on it. It's a green finish. It's not all that exciting, but it's a cool custom color. But ah, those sneaky sneaks giving you a Gibson USA case instead of the cool faux alligator skin one. For shame. For shame. But how about this standard 50s at a significant discount? It's now called Honey Burst Satin. Clear pick guard, did some diamond designs. I guess you could say it's kind of Halloween vibes. They just need a squiggly face right here and you kind of got that whole jack-o'-lantern thing I was talking about. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. But Barrel Burst Les Paul Studio might pique your attention. So it's kind of like the, the Baldy Baldy guitar, except for I like this one much better. It's like a nice deep cobalt blue. You've got a very slight flame top to it. The gold hardware pops it. The only thing that'd make this better is if they matched it on the back. But did they? Nah, no, sadly not. But oh my goodness, another 20, 20, 20, ah, 10, 5. And now this custom has a celestial crimson finish. Huh, this is a really red guitar. Kind of like the one I just teased you with not too long ago. I did buy one this week that will document sometime in October during my spooky guitars month. Just in case you're new to the channel this year, every October, I try my best to do really cool spooky and or themed guitars or really focus on like signature guitars like you're dressing up. I mean, it's really not that different from what I normally do. I just make a big deal out of it, okay? <laughs> I like to have as much fun as possible. But this is just a really cool radiant red Les Paul custom that has a full on refinish. But then what on earth? $5,000 for this standard 50s. All right, let's look at it before we judge. We've seen something kind of similar to this four or five other times. It's got some sparkle stripes. I mean, this looks more like a Christmas guitar. What's this doing here during pre-spooky guitar season here? This one isn't for me personally, but hey, maybe somebody else will really dig this. I like the almost platinum look the hardware gets due to these cool gray plastic pickup rings. And... I like what they were going for here. I just don't think it panned out the way that they were hoping. Like, 
The blue goes all the way to the headstock side on this one, but not on that one. So it gives it a very lopsided look. And the logo is already, you know, crooked naturally. That's just how the Gibson logo is. It just amplifies that even a little bit more extremely. Let's check the back. You've got to be kidding me. It's black for that price? And you gotta remember, this isn't like a custom shop that was redone, this is just a 50 standard. If I refresh this page and this is sold, I'll be surprised. Yep, no surprise there that that's still available. I see that as the next one that sits around for a couple of weeks. But look at this Firebird. On launch hour, this was the only listing that was broken. The photos wouldn't load. But they called it Broke Violet Satin. It's a cool Firebird. So I'm seeing this for the first time with you guys. So it looks like they took one of those Firebird customs. They gave it a new gold pick guard. We've got a cool purple finish. They've bejeweled our knobs. They converted it to be a Maestro Vibrola, which you're either going to love that or hate it. I love the fact that we get the fancy inlays with this. But then, hey, look, the return of super fancy Gibson logo. Now, I'm not sure. Did they shrink it down for this Firebird, or is the Firebird headstock just so obnoxiously large that it just looks normal on this one? But it's oh, so perfect. Love the way it lines up perfectly with that string. But sadly, no custom pinstriping on the back this week. That would have been sweet. A little bit of goldy swirly swirls back here. Something a little bit extra to make it worth the five grand. But how about this one, SG Junior, done with a silver glimmer finish, but I mean, this is gonna be absolutely insane in person. But look at your interesting pick guard, and then look at your interesting pickup. They capped all the pole pieces off with Mother of Pearl? <laughs> I mean, that's a thing that Gibson did back in the 50s on the tenor guitars. They would cap off the two outer ones instead of just making a custom pickup for them. Thunderbird bridge pickup, that's a bass pickup underneath a dog ear P90 cover. Huh, that's strange. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind demoing it. This is a full on reef in, so it's actually kind of cool. And what? I'm speechless on that. What, what did they use for that logo? Is it actually going to be sparkly in person or is it just gonna be static? Used sparingly, I think that's something I really like and want to see more of. Is that still available? Yeah, didn't think so. It's been erased from history. That's why you watch my show. But now we've got a spooky 335 reissue. That looks incredibly good. Complete black top, all blacked out with your pickups, but yet you still get a little bit of goldenness with your knobs and you can see the binding. And then the back's just a satin natural. <laughs> Doesn't really match, but I can just tell that's gonna look awesome in person. But whoa, I was thinking that was like a Gibson USA, not one of the reissue custom shops. I'd like to see them redo that idea just on the cheaper model. But this was a real winner this week, a 60s Les Paul standard at not much of a premium in what they called flaming mulberry finish. It's basically just a really nice purple flame top. Kind of reminds me of there was a Guitar Center run of, I think they called them Les Paul standard pros or customs, I don't remember, but it was a 2017-ish model that looked kind of similar to this. So to be able to get a purple flame top Les Paul for that kind of money was actually a really good deal. You got your cool white knobs, no matching logo or anything. And strangely enough, they give it like a tobacco-ish back? I don't know what that's all about. Our next one leaves me very confused. 1959 Les Paul Standard reissue? But it's got P90s. That is a thing that happened. I've documented one. I mean, they do small runs occasionally. Is that what this actually is? I guess let's do some more digging because these are not regular P90s. Those are P90S. You can tell because they don't have the adjustable row of pole pieces. Either that or we've got bass pickups hidden in this thing. <laughs> but we've got the aged hardware, new knobs. The back's completely natural. They put those acoustic style tuners on here. We've got once again, more DS demo shop serial numbers, but without a cavity shot in here showing me R9, I would more so believe it was an R6, but no mention of the swapped pickups. How's this for an SG standard? Sapphire metallic. That is going to be a great metallic finish in person. The gold hardware really accents that too well. And it really pops it on the binding as well, the whole creamed color. Then you get the continuation of the golden logo due to the ambered over lacquer. However, I think they could have pulled off the blue logo on that one. And then it's a complete gloss refin. I'm a okay with this thing. That's sweet. 4,000 bucks, I would say that's a fair price for as cool as that is. And there's a 339 in VOS. I mean, it's got a nice top to it with a back to match. But you can't turn down sunny green sparkle. Kind of like that purple one from last week. But this time, it's green with gold hardware. Super ultra matching headstock, but not the binding. And it's a complete refin.
And to wrap things up, we've got another interesting Les Paul special priced at $1,700 in Desert Moonrise. So we've kind of got your natural, almost tobacco-like color here, but then it's blue. Interesting color combination, but the rest was just left flat black. However, you might have a little bit of a blue burst on that neck. It's slightly hard to see, but I do believe it is there. So, so far, it seems every week we're going to have like two really nice spooky themed guitars. The other ones, they're just going to play around. So maybe in a couple of weeks, they'll really dish out like an entire week of just crazy ones. But only time will tell. But now let's move on over to the demo shop side of things. Lots of players, great stuff. I just picked out the highlights such as a Flying V Custom. We talked about these in this episode. This one just has uncovered pickups. And the only real reason I wanted to show you this one is somebody seriously messed up. <laughs> I don't know what kind of tool they were using there. Maybe their screwdriver slipped. That's probably what it is when they're setting up the intonation. But that's why it's in the demo shop. And then we had a 57 reissue, this time with black plastics, but it's got the P90 pickups. I'm not a big fan of gold tops with black plastics unless it's with humbuckers because the whole nickel cover of the humbucker really transforms the vibe in my opinion. When it's on the P90s, I, I just don't think it works as well. But the back is a beautiful natural. But as far as the crown jewels this week, look at this thing. It's awesome had i had seen this thing i would have snapped it up or am i just trying to throw you off the trail this gives me like wrapped up mummy vibes this top is just fantastic everything i would want in a les paul custom access it's got the floyd rose it's all blinged out with the gold hardware so it matches this rust finish and let me tell you rust is such a cool color like the top with maple yeah maybe not the coolest but the back love it absolutely love the way the rust finish looks on mahogany it gives it such a unique vibe you can check out my sg elegant rust review and demo if you want to see this color up close and personal i'm surprised nobody snapped that thing up for me yet but yeah that was a cool guitar very very fair price too no reason that couldn't sell for 4500 but this was a screaming deal i just thought it was a regular les paul custom in white that they modified but no 74 as far as their website is concerned, they don't offer a 74 reissue, but you can call them up and made to measure it, I would assume. But it's got the old Gibson style logo on it. And then you got your nice bump of a volute back here. You know, it's kind of Randy Rhodes in style here. I mean, sure, this one's got some blemishes, but at 4300, of course, it sold quick. This one really caught my attention as well. It's Rose Gold Sparkle. So Rose Gold is generally a Guitar Center exclusive finish. I've documented a few of those. But usually with the Rose Gold finish, they do the whole Rose Gold treatment. You get mixed hardware of gold and chrome. But this one, they didn't do that. So it's kind of a bummer because I've talked to guys that are like, I wish there was a Rose Gold Les Paul Custom out there. I would buy it. And... Here it is, but they, they didn't give it the rose gold treatment. So I was like, come on, demo shop mod guys. You were so close, so close to doing it right, and you messed it up. <laughs> 4500 was a very appropriate price. And there's a 60 Les Paul special at 3300 bucks. This one's cheaper than what the resellers of the market are wanting for the USA Rick Beatos that are satin finished. So, I mean, it's a good deal in that aspect. I just thought the cream plastic change was an interesting choice. Then lastly, another good deal on a white Les Paul Custom. Why they took the poker chip away, I, I don't fully understand that. But you can see right here, you can buy the same thing. It's going to be 5500 on the used market. Of course it's going to sell out at 38 So some pretty nice deals from the demo shop this week on some nice colors. But how did the European side fare? There's actually a lot of like 50s and 60s standards for like 1900 bucks, which is a steal of a deal. Like this one, it's got a nice top even too. But this Explorer was from 2016. I mean, it's not a particularly fantastic model of Explorer. Like, it's a good one. But you just don't see them too often. And $1,300 is good price. The studio for $900, it's like... <laughs> Sometimes you guys get some really good deals for players grade stuff in the Netherlands. And then this photo shoot looks like it came from like when this shop first launched. So I don't know what that's about. Did it get returned or what's going on? But it looks like that one's a 2016 as well for 900 bucks. Kind of strange when your tribute is the same price as your studio. However, if money was not an object, I would actually choose the tribute over the studio. And speaking of cool tributes, this one's got some crazy wood grain. All right, Droglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one.
Take care.